today we are visiting a special little place. We got up super early at 5 in the morning and check it out. This is where we are. Angkor Wat, Cambodia. inside Angkor Wat and this is the largest religious structure in the whole world. So this is my very first time visiting Angkor Wat but Sam over here has been to this place a whopping four times. World traveler much? <laughs> so how is your fourth time here different from the first, second and third? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well the temples are certainly still as impressive as ever but so many more tourists here than when I first came. It's, I would say tripled, quadrupled, maybe even more than that. It's just unbelievable how many people are sharing the experience. This is actually a Hindu temple that was dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu and the temple was built by a Cambodian king who helped unify the country and to also spread the Khmer influence across Southeast Asia. One of the most impressive things about this temple here is actually the massive moat that surrounds it. It's one of the first things you notice as you're coming up to the temple. several options for booking tickets to visit the temples of Angkor. We went with a three-day option and that was $40, but you can also go with a one-day option, two-day option, or if you really love temples, seven days. Wow. But I imagine that's quite pricey. A good time to come to Angkor Wat is actually right at lunchtime because a lot of the tourist buses and tourists are out having lunch or are at that point in the day templed out which means they're, they're really hot, they're tired, they're sort of, they've seen enough temples for the day. So if you want uh, an alternative time to come, definitely consider coming around you know, between say 12 and 1.30. Coming back for the fourth time was amazing. I never get tired of this place. But one funny observation I have is that I noticed that any families dragging along bringing their children, <laughs> the children really didn't seem to be enjoying this as much. They're just dragging their feet. I think it has a lot to do with the heat and humidity outside right now. It's just, it is really, really hard to be walking around and not sweating profusely. I really enjoyed getting up early and coming to watch the sunrise at Angkor Wat. I thought that maybe the experience wouldn't feel special because there are literally hundreds of people also here at that time of day, but it felt kind of like we were sharing the moment together, so I really enjoyed it. Today we're going to be having a special experience. We are taking a bamboo train 
along these old tracks that used to run from Nam Pen all the way to Battenbong. So this train is really just a bamboo platform with a few mats laid over top. It has a six horsepower engine and we are going to be speeding through and see what we find. This morning we've got a special activity plan. We are taking cooking class, Khmer cooking class, and I'm all thumbs in the kitchen, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. Right now we are at the local market and we are going to pick up some ingredients for the cooking class. And it's raining. A red curry paste, yeah? And it's a chili paste, yeah. So these are uh, vegetables, uh, very, very fresh vegetable. And then they say, Ginger, but it is not a ginger, it is galangal. Coconut, and then she grated. it. You know, she grated it to get her meat, coconut meat. So we've got her aprons on, ready to cook. See them leave Phnom Penh and see how they will. They converse, you know, they change how to make fish amok. They make short camp as a four or three or four minutes. Trying to slice lemongrass. Our ingredients so far, they smell really good. 10 minutes. And <coughs> <coughs> what might you be doing? Just crushing the ingredients. You make a pounding for 10 minutes. Making the curry paste. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. We're really earning our meal here. We're making our curry paste. I've been pounding away for almost 10 minutes now. Now we're slicing up the snake fish. Still haven't cut my finger. Okay, so here is our amok. We made a little curry type thing, put it in the banana bowl that we've prepared. And it has to be steamed now. Yes. So 
here is the meal that we prepare today. We have spring rolls, a nice dipping sauce. Lok lok, a kind of beef, meat, and over here, amok, which is fish in a coconut cream sauce. Okay, so I'm going to try my lok lok. Let's see how this turned out. cooked it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try one of the spring rolls we made. Mm. I still can't believe I didn't burn down the kitchen. <laughs> and it's delicious, by the way. <laughs> we just finished our cooking class. There's no, I didn't cause an international incident. I didn't burn down the kitchen. So overall, a success. If anyone wants to come, the kitchen is called Nari's Kitchen, and they have a morning and an evening class, and it costs $10 a person. This restaurant and cooking school is run by Nari and her, her husband Toot. They will take you to the market, and you will spend an hour there just looking at different vegetables, picking up ingredients, and then afterwards you come back to the school, you cook for two hours, and then, then you get to enjoy your meal. So we highly recommend it. Excellent food. Today we are having a feast of a dinner. We are at a Cambodian restaurant and we have just ordered ourselves an eight course meal. <laughs> <laughs> this restaurant is called Angkor Pong and it's come highly recommended so we have high expectations for this meal. That was a really good spring roll. It had some very fresh and zesty flavors and a little bit of seafood as well. So, so far so good. So next up we have the spare ribs and these do look good. just melts in your mouth. So next up we are trying the amok, which is one of the most popular dishes in Cambodia. And amok is fish that has been coated in a coconut cream and then baked in a banana leaf. So let's see how that tastes. Mm -hmm. Hit the spot. It should take a second bite before I get any. Mm -hmm. And this is the one thing that I'm probably almost most excited about. The homemade green curry with chicken. I've got a slice of chicken. Wow. You can really taste the curry. And once again, just like the spare ribs, it just melts in your mouth. I barely even have to chew. Is it coconut based? I don't think it's that strongly coconut based, no. So up next is our shaved mango salad, which has some peanuts and mint leaves on top. Mm. Sweet? Yes, sir. 
it is sweet. It's also nice and crunchy because of the peanuts. And it has some nice spices. It's really flavorful. Hey, you just took a second bite. And last but certainly not least is the fried water spinach. Now that's tasty. It's got kind of a buttery garlic flavor. Time for dessert. Tell us what you're having. And to finish off, we've got a sweet little treat. A tap tapioca-based pudding with banana. Oh, take a big bite. So sweet. So good. So we have finished our feast of a dinner. I must admit, when I first saw the platter being brought over, I thought, hmm, this is for two people. I think I could probably eat my own. But in the end, we still had food left over. Like, that was just so much to eat. It was so tasty, but it was really filling at the same time. So, good stuff, good dinner. So the eight course platter is $14 for two people. And for those who want to come here, this restaurant is located right in the heart of Siem Reap, nearby the Central Market. Can't miss it. We are visiting Shong Ek, also known as the Killing Fields here in Cambodia. This is one of the many sites scattered about the country where the Khmer Rouge executed its own people. To put it into perspective, one out of four people of the Cambodian population were executed during this regime. orchard setting it's just hard to believe the atrocities that took place not all of the graves been excavated here under this lake there are still many graves where bodies were thrown Kind of place where you come out feeling heavy emotions and even though it's not necessarily a pleasant visit i think it's important to visit sites like these in order to learn a bit about the history of the countries you travel through visiting this site just gives me extra respect for the Khmer people how resilient they are how they've been able to overcome this, this atrocity and hopefully this memorial here will serve to educate others future generations so that this never happens again. Today we are at an Upstar performance which includes traditional music and dance and we've also just finished feasting. 
feasting on a wonderful meal and we are going to enjoy the show. This evening, this performance show and dinner is uh, 12 US dollars, but we got a special deal from our guest house for only eight. And I would say just the food alone is well worth that. Now we get the performance to check out. several parts to this performance. It includes folk music, dance, and mime. Taking you to a very happy place in Siemory. And where's your happy smile? <laughs> With all of these happy pizza joints to choose from, I don't even know where to go. And there's even one that's ecstatic. Wow! <laughs> Whoa. Actually, this is just a delicious normal pizza that we're feasting on right now. So once upon a time, happy pizzas meant a completely different thing. They had a special topping that was grown in the mountains. Mm -hmm. But recently, there has been a police crackdown on these happy pizzas, so they are no longer available. <sighs> Nothing like ice cold beer. And one of the nice features of all of these happy restaurants around here is that draft beer is only 50 cents. The 
There are never any pizza slices left when I'm around. We're here at Toll Slaying Genocide Museum, formerly known as S21. This area used to be a former primary school and high school before being turned into a detention, interrogation, and torture center. There was an estimated 20,000 people killed here between 1975 and 1978. These atrocities were committed by the Khmer Rouge, which was led by Pol Pot's regime. Today we are outside Siem Reap and we are exploring the temples of Angkor starting with Angkor Thom. The most fascinating thing about Bayon are the cold faces that have a hint of a smile. This massive complex has 54 towers with 216 faces on them. Here we have the Terrace of the Elephants. It is 350 meters long. This was once used as a viewing platform from where you could watch the ceremonies that took place for the king. <laughs> well, we're traveling right now in Cambodia in April and it is the hottest time of the year here. It's always hot in Cambodia, but this is literally the worst month. I'm just sweating buckets. So a tip for people coming here, if you want to come in a bit of a cooler time, December, January, February, great time to come. It's also peak season here, so you will be sharing it with more tourists, but you won't be sweating as much. Tonight we're at the local circus in Badenbong. It's run by an organization that <coughs> helps out disadvantaged children. 
and we're excited and looking forward to the show. So this circus is for a good cause. It runs twice a week and our tickets were only $10. So let's go check out the show. Today we're in Shinukville to check out the beach. Let me tell you what Lonely Planet says about this place. Surrounded by white sand beaches 
and as yet undeveloped tropical islands, Xianoukville is Cambodia's premier seaside resort. Let me show you that. about a few of the things we found on the beach. Flip-flops, a broken bottle of absolute vodka, a pregnancy test, a bottle of hot sauce, some fishing lines, construction materials, plastic, and just lots of garbage in general. And it's not just in a few select areas, this is all over the beach, like littered. The whole beach. I first came here back in 2008, and when I arrived at the time, this was actually quite a nice little spot. It was what you would consider an alternative to the beaches in Thailand. But what's happened here over the last several years, I mean, it's disgusting. This is officially, in my opinion, paradise ruined. taking better care of the beach because it really is a beautiful setting like you have the lush tropical vegetations you have boats the water is the perfect temperature but there's just so much garbage that I'm afraid of going into the water because my leg could get caught up with a glass bottle so I'm disappointed to try and salvage this situation we're actually going to be checking into quite a nice hotel it is our one-year anniversary we came here with the plan of relaxing on the beach and really enjoying some swimming and other activities in and around the beach area. But since it's ruined, more or less, we're going to have to make up for it in other ways. And we're not going to be staying here nearly as long as we had planned either. This is just disgusting from both the perspective of the tourists, the backpackers and the locals. I mean, how could this have happened? I'm not impressed. parties are to blame. Backpackers for being dirty and not taking care of their crap and throwing it in the garbage. But also locals for not taking the initiative to clean up their own beach and encourage tourism. So I think both parties need to step it up a little bit. Absolutely. up early in the morning certainly has its advantages. We are the first people to arrive at this temple, Bante Sre. This is one of the temples that we have been most excited to visit and we are officially the first ones here.
here we are inside the temple. This happens to be a Hindu temple and it is dedicated to the god Shiva. Most of the temples of Angkor were commissioned by powerful kings, but this temple in particular was not. It was commissioned by a Brahmin, which makes it quite unique. Because we came here early, we got a VIP tour. Normally, these areas are gated off, as you can see by the weight perimeter here. And the rope. Look at where we are. of being the first on site can be underestimated. I mean, anything to avoid those package tours is, is a good idea. There are many temples to choose from, but this one in particular, Bantis Ray, is considered to be the crown jewel of Angkorian art because it has some of the most exquisite and intricate carvings. This temple is located very far away from Siem Reap. We had to travel over an hour in a tuk-tuk, and I slept most of the way, but I hear it was a very scenic journey. Yes? <laughs> Along the way, we passed a lot of rural villages. We saw locals out doing various kinds of activities early in the morning, some farming related, some business. We saw bikes packed, you know, just to the total brim full of stuff. We saw a lot of different things and it was just a really cool trip to get out here. We're gonna go check out some traditional Khmer music, Cambodian music here, it's gonna be awesome.
was a great performance. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We are now visiting Taprom, which is a Buddhist temple where the jungle just dominates the architecture. Here the buildings are wrapped in trees, some of the entrances are blocked. And Indiana Jones would feel right at home here at this temple. In fact, it was used for the set of Tomb Raider starring Angelina Jolie. It's decaying, it's crumbling, but it's a great place to explore. This is an example of nature taking over the temple. Here you have this massive tree that's just straddling a wall, really. Some parts of the temple have been completely destroyed over the centuries, which actually creates quite a fascinating atmosphere. I first visited Top Rome back in 2008, and wow, was it an entirely different experience. There was hardly anyone. I was able to walk around without, you know, encountering mass crowds. It's completely different this time. And instead of sort of lamenting about it and, you know, just getting really negative and down about it, what I've been actually doing is just taking a lot of time lapse shots. I'm using the crowds and the people as sort of a, you know, backdrop for filming. And that's what I'm going to do throughout this entire time that I'm here exploring the temples of Angkor. much quieter alternative once you've explored the temple is actually just to walk around the perimeter. It's quite peaceful here. our final bus trip in Cambodia from Battambang to Phnom Penh, a six hour journey, and we've got ourselves a little local snack here. Ooh, it's something we've eaten before, bamboo rice. Let's take a big bite. <laughs> We were almost in an accident, but you didn't we capture that. <laughs> it was so close, like this car just pulled out and totally without looking. And we were like, 
less than less than a meter away from running into it. Luckily, nothing happened. Over. We're basically just looking to get our Vietnamese visas and then we're off to Saigon! Yeah, Vietnam, Saigon. So we're taking a rural countryside tour today of basketball. We're going to be buying some sticky rice wrapped up in a bamboo wrapper. Once it's been cooked, you just kind of crack the bamboo and peel it down and there you have the rice. It's been mixed with coconut cream and some black beans. Oh, it looks Very good. Very tasty. It smells great. Take a bite. How do you like it? It's delicious. It's like, you can totally tell it's been made with coconut, but there hasn't been a lot of extra sugar. So it's, it's definitely a little bit sweet, but it's not too sweet. I really like it. lovely snack is only 60 US cents. Not bad. All right, brave man going to eat a little cricket there. Time to have a cricket. And this is my first time eating one? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay, big bite. Stick it in your mouth. You try one as well. Oh, no, no, no. It's actually really good. Oh, very good. Wow. Mm. It's salt, salty, a little bit sweet too. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Oh. Oh, Eat one another more. one. <laughs> one more. There we go. Mm. You liked it? Mm. So we're here at the fish market now. You can certainly smell all the fish all around here. It's just, wow, overwhelming. And we're gonna just uh, check out to see what was here. To eat. So here is a form of preserved fermented fish that our guy just told us tastes a little bit like cheese. So what's this here? The fish paste, where they ferment it here. Uh -huh. Just a lot of salt. It's a lot of salt. So that's ready to eat? Uh, yes. Take the salt out and the mm -hmm. fish inside. 
if you don't wrap plastic bag around, the insect can acquire it. Oh. oh, so there's plastic wrapped around these guava fruits to prevent insects from eating them. So we call a plastic bag tree. <laughs> <laughs> For fill up inside the pillows or mattress. Ah. So we use this one. It looks really soft. Yeah, very soft. You can touch. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Yeah. And these are these are the seeds for new plants? Yes, for seeds? new plants. Yeah. Where where it comes from the tree right there? It's the big one over there. Oh, okay. The big one.